Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Wednesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. I'm glad that you're with us today. My Bible is sitting open, and yes, it's open to the book of Leviticus. We're coming near to the end of the book of Leviticus. We've gone through the book. Most of the time, we've taken one chapter per broadcast, but in the last few weeks, we've kind of slowed down a little bit. In chapter 24, we started here on the Monday broadcast. Today, we're in verses 5 through 9. So it's if at all possible, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God. Join me in Leviticus chapter 24 and get some note paper with which you can take some notes. I have got a gospel tract here that I use all the time. It's a tract designed to use when you're out eating in a restaurant or somebody's doing some kind of service for you. And I want to put this into your hand. Would you let me do that? I'm going to say more about gospel tracts in general in just a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Tell me, did you grow up in a church that had a lot of ceremonies attached to it? There are churches who love the Bible and love the gospel who use a pretty fair amount of pageantry and symbolism in their worship services. Well, I did not grow up in such a church. So due to my personal background and what my reading in the Word of God, pageantry does not do a lot for me. When I pastored, we did not have a great deal of pageantry. Now, it, that may be just the opposite for you. There was, though, patriotry and ceremony and symbolism in the worship services there in the Old Testament. It was part of God's plan. One part of the Jewish pageantry involved 12 loaves of bread, and those loaves were baked and placed neatly in two rows inside the tabernacle. Now, what in the world was all this for? Well, that's where we're headed today in the broadcast. Oh, oh by the way, even though I'm not Jewish, there is a real sense in which I'm baking bread for God today, and so are you. Here's the question for you. What's baking in your life's oven for God today? Hang on, I'll answer the question. Get your Bible, Leviticus, please, and chapter 24. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. -T. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I really want to put a sample packet which has one of all of our English tracks in it. I want to put that sample packet into your hand and give you some tools to communicate the gospel even farther than you're able to do by verbally telling the gospel. This particular track is entitled, Thank You, Your Service Was. And after the word was, you have the opportunity to grade the person's service whether it be a person doing brake work on your car, whether it be the person that's serving you at the counter in a doctor's office, or again, the person that may be serving your food there at a restaurant. Here are the choices. Number one, acceptable. Number two, good. Number three, excellent. And here you go. The top one is this, the greatest service in the world. Have you ever had service that was so good you'd say, I would grade it the greatest service in the world? Well, friend, if you've had, do me a favor. Don't ever check that box because we use that as a way to get into the gospel. And here's how. I've actually had waiters and waitresses ask me this. How can I earn that top rating? This track explains, well, to give me the greatest service in the world, you not only have to serve my food, but you have to pay my bill. Oh, I've never had a waiter or waitress do that. But friend, that leads into the gospel. Jesus came to serve us and then paid our sin debt. He served us 
in the greatest service in the world. It makes a clear presentation of the gospel. Here's a great tool. Thank you, your service was. It's in the sample packet. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. And please have pen and paper ready and jot down. Let me have your name and address. We'll send it to you. You can, though, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open, I begin reading Leviticus chapter 24, verse 5 says this, And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof, two tenth deals shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in rows, six in a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. That's the table of showbread. Verse 7. And thou shalt put fine frankincense upon each row. And it shall be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord, continually being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons and they shall eat it in the holy place, for it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. Stopping there right now. Now, okay, we have just read the text of Scripture, and to re- by way of reminder, Leviticus 24 gives us four lessons. On Monday, we had lessons from the light in the tabernacle in verses 1 to 4. Now we're going to have lessons from the loaves, these loaves of bread here in verses 5 to 9. I've got a five-point outline for verses 5 through 9, and each point begins with a key word that begins with the letter C, like in the word cat. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one is the word count. You know, one, two, three, four, five, count. It's based upon verse five. The loaves were 12 in number. That was their count. And I think you already know the significance of the number 12 when it comes to the children of Israel. There was one loaf of bread for each of the 12 tribes. The first word is the word count. My second word is the word connection connection. It's based upon verse 8. These loaves were connected to the people, to the congregation. They were the ones who provided the flour to make these loaves. It appears to me that the uh, people brought the flour and they brought it there and the Levites would bake the bread and that's what went into the tabernacle. I do know verse 8 says this, that the bread was presented in order, in rank there, and very carefully done. It was presented in order to the Lord, being, as this is a quote from verse 8, being taken from the children of Israel. Now, what was the point of the bread? Well, the bread was made with flour, obviously, and the flour came because the people worked to grow it. These 12 loaves were a symbol of, a form of an offering of the people's labor, their work to God. As God's people, their labor was to be done as an offering to God. And you know very, very well that your offering, if you know Christ, my offering, because I know Christ, is to, my work is to be an offering to God as well. Now, that's why we can ask the question, what are we baking today in our life's oven? Our labor Your labor, my labor is brought to God and he sees it and it needs to be fit for him. Here's word number three. It's the word conspicuous based upon verse seven. The bread was laid out there and then pure frankincense was put on it. My friend, that bread smelled, not just the first day in which it was freshly baked, it smelled because of that frankincense. It was conspicuous due to its odor. It was a sweet savor in God's house. Word number four is the word continuous, still based upon verse eight. Well, let me read part of verse 8 again. It says this, Every Sabbath he, that is a priest, shall set it in order before the Lord continually. And then the verse ends with this statement, by an everlasting covenant. You see, every Saturday, 12 new loaves were laid on the table of showbread. The offering of last week's work was good for only last week. Now, new bread and new labor for God needed to be offered for this week. 
So let's make an application, dear friend. Is there any fresh service, fresh labor for God from you and from me? Or is all you and I have to talk about are the stories of how we used to serve God? Friend, if you've quit serving, then let's get up from our place and find a way to serve God, serving God in the lives of other people. That's what Jesus did. And let's make a fresh offering to God of labor this week. My final word, beginning with C, is the word consumption based upon verse 9. The bread offered to God was eaten. It was consumed, but only by Aaron and his sons, the priest. Think with me a moment. Can I ask you what may seem like a off-the-wall question? It may seem even silly, but here it is. How does your pastor eat? How does he eat? I mean, does he and his family, how do they get their food? Oh, yes, he goes to the store just like you and I do. I got that. But how do they purchase their groceries? Well, here's how. They're church families. They go to work and they labor and they get paid. And from their paychecks, they come and they tie, they bring offerings to the church. And some of their offering pays for the church's mortgage, if it still has one. Some pays the light bill and some pays for the salaries of the people employed by the church. Your pastor eats because you offer the Lord the results of your labor. Well, the Old Testament priests did that too. They just skipped the middleman and never went to the grocery store. There's a great deal in Scripture about how you and I are to be doing our daily work. The book of James has a great deal to say about being careful about those who work in their day-to-day field, but the Bible has a lot to say about how you and I just do our work as individuals. If you are oh, if you're a mechanic, let's say, then you know that you are to do your mechanics, whether it's on a large piece of equipment or a small piece, you are to do that as unto the Lord. But all of us need to be serving God in ways that, well, never will receive a paycheck for. That may be teaching Sunday school. Maybe you're the church janitor. Uh, Maybe you're the one that is in charge of the nursery during Sunday school while other people are learning, and every Sunday you're watching those babies. Perhaps you're the one fixing meals for hurting folk in your church. Friend, giving out gospel tracts is a tremendous way to work for God. Let me send you some of those tracks. Let me put you to work as a co-laborer with me in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're listening today and you're saying, why in the world is this guy talking out of the book of Leviticus in this up-to-date era? Here's why. The book of Leviticus talks about how people that belong to God are learning to worship. Friend, do you belong to God? You say, I'm a Christian. I didn't ask you if you're a Christian. I asked you, are you belonging to God? You see, to be part of God's family has nothing to do with you being born an American or any other country. It's not about what your family does on Sundays. It's about you having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That personal relationship starts off rather bleak because God says, you're a sinner. Your sin deserves hell, the lake of fire but I choose to love you and offer you by grace, redemption through the blood of my son, Jesus. If you've never received him, receive him now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.